All right, all right, all right. We're here at Song of the Day, and we are back. Yes, we are back in the rock cave. Sorry about that, people. You're stuck with me this week after this amazing week we had last week. Traveled from the beautiful mountains of the Adirondacks back to Armageddon here in Connecticut with the power outages and the storm. But it's all right. Most people getting their power back by last night. So, what a week, huh? We had some great special guests this last week. Thank you, Lila. Finally. Thank you, Anne. That Dirty Dancing video. A lot of work done there. That one came together quite well. Lila schooling us on the chicks. And now you got me. All week. That's right. I'll be here all week. Uh, what do we got going on today? Well, today is Monday, August 10th. And today in history, let's run it down first. Not a whole lot going on, but 1963, Peter, Paul, and Mary are number one with Blowing in the Wind. 1974, Paper Lace. Anyone remember Paper Lace? The Night Chicago Died. I remember this song as a kid. We used to buy those KTEL records where they would put all the hits on one record so we could get them all. I remember the actual title of the one that I had it was called Dynamite. It was actually a series of records that would come out, but Dynamite had... The Night Chicago Died on it. Coming up fast, right behind them, entering the top ten for the first time with their first single, their first hit, ABBA, Waterloo. 1982, Queen is playing Veterans Memorial Coliseum in New Haven. If you saw that show, let me know. Birthdays today, 1909, Leo Fender, born in Anaheim, the inventor of the Fender guitar. 1943, Ronnie Spector. Everyone knows Ronnie. 1947, Ian Anderson of Jethro Tull. He is Jethro Tull, right? People thought Jethro Tull was a person. Ian Anderson's the singer. Never got to see them in concert. Never got to see him in concert. I think he might still tour, so I'll have to do that. But uh, was a very late Jethro Tull fan. Did not become a fan until after, really after college. Apologies to David Remington in high school who was obsessed with Jethro Tull, to which I could never understand. And last birthday, 1968, Michael Bivens of Belle Biv DeVoe. Remember that? Poison? Yeah, good stuff. All right, what are we doing today? Today we got on this date coming into the top 10. This is a massive album. I'm excited about this one today. I can't say enough about this album, but Dire Straits, Brothers in Arms, cruising up the top 10. Here we go, right here. <clears throat> what a record, huh? This thing is amazing. Absolutely amazing. It is one of my favorite records of all time. The whole album, songs that you may not know, some of my favorite ones are the ones you would not know. This is a great record, but let's run through the numbers. Released in May, it co comes into the top 10 around this time. Uh, it was 35 years ago. It spent nine weeks at number one in the United States. It was the first album 10 times platinum in the UK. It went nine times platinum in the United States. It sold 30 million copies worldwide, one of the best-selling records of all time. It was nominated for three Grammys. It won two. It won two in 1986. And guess what? It won another Grammy in 2006 for best surround album of all time. How about that? Uh, it won a Brit Award. It won a Juno Award. I mean, this thing was just massive can't say it enough. It was recorded in the Caribbean. Uh, Knopfler was a co-producer. Um, it was the first one ever recorded on a Sony 24-track digital tape machine. <clears throat> they very much wanted to be pioneers in the sound in that department, and they were. Uh, usual band members recording. Their, their permanent drummer, Terry Williams, was there. He was recording for a full month. And for whatever reason, they decided that he was not cutting the mustard on that. So they brought in a session drummer. This guy, his name was uh, Omar Hakim. He's a jazz drummer. He came in, flew down, came in, cut the tracks in two days, two days, and then had, flew off because he had other commitments. Williams, the band's drummer, his only credit on the whole album is the intro to Money for Nothing. That's him doing the build-up 
to that song. But he ends up touring with them and he's in all their music videos. I don't know the story there, but that sounds a little awkward. Um, so, basically, um, it was the base. It was the first album to sell a million copies on CD. It was targeted for CD. It was the first record to outsell its vinyl counterpart. Um, it was the first CD to sell one million copies. Uh, they said that at one point they were the CD manufacturers around the globe were slowing down for other artists because they were so busy making this record, this CD for Dire Straits. Money for Nothing. That video comes out. It's the, one of the most played videos on MTV in history. Um, and guess what? Sting has a writing credit on there. You think he's gonna, the story is that he's annoyed about that, but his publishing company wanted him to get writing credit, and he gets writing credit for coming up with, well, singing Don't Stand So Close to Me melody when he says, I want my MTV. That's his melody for Don't Stand So Close to Me. So that's why he gets credit writing for that song. So he's been making money off that song his whole life since 1985. He gets a sweet little check um, just for that part. Uh, so what are the songs on this record? You got money for nothing, right? So I remember the first time I ever heard the song ever. I was playing basketball in my driveway, listening to the radio. I heard the beginning. I heard Sting. I heard him say, I want my MTV. Then it came in this drum track and then the guitars. And I was like, what is this? I was like, I need this now. I need whatever this is. Amazing. Of course, then the video comes out and everyone went bonkers for that video. Uh, they just, it was crazy. Uh, so Far Away, great song. Walk of Life, that one almost not, didn't make the record. Uh, the producer, co-producer did not want it on there. He wanted to cut it out. The band voted it in. Your Latest Trick, awesome song. Why Worry, awesome song. Ride Across the River, guess what? Awesome song if you haven't heard it. Uh, the Man's Too Strong, there you go. Another awesome song. Uh, one World, that's a good song. And Brothers in Arms, I love the song Brothers in Arms. It's a slow song great song i've listened to that song a million times uh and for those of you who watched miami vice like myself that is in a key episode of the whole thing so anyway when they put this record out on cd it was fine but when they went to go put it on record it would have had to have been a two double album and they didn't want to make it a double album so they cut like minutes off of the first side i mean three minutes off of why worry they cut a minute off of some a bunch of the other songs um, so that's kind of an interesting fact. If you were buying the record, you got shorter versions. So if you got to go with song of the day, we're at eight minutes. So I'm going to cut, cut it off now. If we're going to go with song of the day, you know, normally I would say I might go to a deeper cut. It might be something like the man's too strong or brothers in arms, but how can you do this album and not do, I mean, how can you, I mean, it's just not, it's not possible, right? You can't money for nothing has to be it. You know, some of you might be tired of that song, but it is the iconic song from this album, from this record, the video, everything. You got money for nothing for song of the day today, Monday, August 10th. What a way to start your week. Again, you're stuck with me all week and have a great day. I'm looking forward to this week. We'll talk to you later. And as usual, we'll see you on the flip side.